What do new screenwriters need to know about story structure? What would you teach them? Well, story structure that you have to have an idea that that can can fill, let's say, a screenplay. Many times, someone sits down to write. They say, "I have an idea for a script," and it really quite isn't a fully fleshed out story with a beginning, a middle, and an end. And so, I would say before you sit down. You can have a kernel of an idea which blossoms into something bigger, but try to work on it where you can step back away and go, is this a movie? As we know, movies, you know, um, is it going to be big enough? Um, and there are small stories. I'm not saying that small stories aren't movies, but if you're going to write a feature film for, you know, big Hollywood for, you know, 4,000 screens, it may not be this little idea. You know, and sometimes um, even when I see an outline, there's not enough story there to facilitate a hundred pages. You know, you think it is, and you're like, "Well, you kind of skipped over most of the second act here. You didn't quite think through all that." Um, and structure is extremely important. So screenplays are built on, you know, telling the story. Um, so your story was originally, I mean, your your question about structure. Do you think then a lot of people just have a great beginning and then a, a, a finishing yes. at, and then in the middle is very muddy? Yes, it's, okay. it's always muddy in the middle and the first act is the easiest setup because it's all set up, right? We're all setting up the, you know, the thing and then you have to go on the journey in act two and that's where it starts to get more difficult because like I say, if you're just uh, winging a script, it's always those big barren wasteland in the middle that's really, you know, you could know the ending, hopefully it'll get you there. I know the ending scene, fantastic, you know where you have to get, but all that stuff in between, you know, that, that always seems to be the issue, is the, is the big, let's say it's act two, the middle, the middle part, which is pretty much the meat and potatoes of, you know, the movie. What has helped you get to a better second act? Well, knowing the ending for sure, but also um, really getting to the essence of what, what am I trying to do with this story? You know what I mean? What, what's, um, what's my theme? What is my, what's this about? What's, you know, is it just, well, uh, two people on a car ride and they drive across the country. Great. That could be an amazing story, but what happens? What is it about? You know, what's the, what's the problem? What, what do they have to face? What to get to that ending part? And working on an outline, I hate to refer back to that, is working on the story. So you just, um, and sometimes a story, you think it's something's there and it doesn't work. You know, and other times I, I've done many drafts of an outline where I couldn't find the story and I kept trying to fight it. And then I realized that it had to do with the characters. And so the story was there, the A, B, C, and D of it, but it still wasn't working. So a lot of times you can have an idea which, you have to work it. The you have to work it into its you know it, its full essence of what it can be, and sometimes it you may want to just leave it alone and say you know what that, I don't think that's I don't think that's a story that that I can manage together, and I'm going to move on to something else. That's okay too. Do you think a lot of people have trouble letting go of their stories? Like, what if it's a very personal story? Well, yeah. Well, if it's a personal story. Um, it would be hard to let go, trying to force it. But then I might say, maybe it's not meant to be a screenplay. Maybe it's meant to be something else. Maybe a book, you know, or I don't know what what uh, it could be. But and that's for the writer to decide if it really is not is not working, and it's okay to to move on to something else. There's no no harm, no foul, you know. Have you done that where you're like, you know what, I I love these characters, but for some reason. This isn't going, I mean, for, for yeah. things that you've written on your own, not yes. been paid to write. Uh, I, I have a hard time, I'm so strict about it has to be like, like a really good idea of my own that it sort of, I have this inner filter that it limits that, unfortunately. So, um, yeah, many times I've said this one just is not, it's not working. And other ones, you, other ones you see right away because the characters are so vibrant and alive and you're like, yeah, I can... I can see this, you know, that this is what, what it works. And like I said, there's no, 
there's no harm in maybe putting it aside too. Maybe another time as you can become a more experienced writer that you can go back to it and work on it. So nothing's ever dead, you know, you don't have to discard it completely, um, nor, nor do I think you should, but to move on is okay as well. You put it in, you know, in the, in the notebook and say, you know, and that's how you build ideas. That's how you build a, an arsenal of stuff that you can go back and work on and keep your well and your creative well full, you know. You've also talked about just living life yes. as well. To, to How do you know when, aside from not being on an assignment, that it's time to go and, and fill the well? Because I know that yeah. the life behind a computer can get very one-dimensional. Oh, sure. you know? Yeah, it's, I, I hate uh, sitting at the keyboard. I mean, it's, in the, it's a necessity, but um, hmm. you also have to live your life. And like we were talking about that, you know, an, an authentic life outside your comfort zone is a good thing. You know, do things that you're afraid of. I don't mean jump off a cliff, but um, I went skydiving once, you know, oh. and that was uh, one time only. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't just to go, oh, I mean, some people were going and, and they said, hey, you want to come? And I'm like, yeah, I do. And it's not something I, I would ever do again. And I'm not a daredevil type person, but it was amazing experience. And those kind of experiences, you know, you can write into your projects where it's not just you're living in a little protected bubble where you're writing stuff that you've seen on television or movies where you're just regurgitating, which could be cliches to begin with, which probably are. You know, that, that's where your own personal experience comes into characters and, and your unique voice and things. Because I've lived it. I went to blah, blah, blah. I've been, you know, I've been there, you know, type of thing. So, yeah, writers should have interesting lives if possible. Yeah, because I was watching a master class with David Sedaris. Oh, yes. It's hilarious. And he picks up garbage, I guess, uh, around the little town that he lives in. Wow. And he says that, you know, he wears his vest and he does it, and people don't realize a lot of times that he's this writer, this author. And sure. So sometimes they'll be like, oh, sir, you actually missed a piece over here. <laughs> and he goes with it. Yeah. And he says, I would have, this is, this gets me out. This is yeah. where I'm able to see people in ways that I wouldn't see them right, when I'm yeah, speaking in front of them. They're not gonna talk to me like that, you know? And he goes with it and he, and he, oh yeah, sure, sorry about that. And so that's part of his way, he's doing a good thing and he and, also gets out and interacts with people. And he's, he's observing life too, you know, as an as a, a actor or writer, it's good to observe the world around you, get off the phone, you know, and actually go, oh my gosh, that's interesting, this is real life out here, you know, it's an interesting character. Or, Oh, I heard that little, at the coffee shop, that person said that thing, you know, write it down in your notebook. These are, these are cool little things that you can start building upon. It's, being, it's part of your job to be an observer as well as an adventurer, you know, I think so. I mean, I don't mean, you know, take off, quit your job and, you know, sail across the world if that's your thing. But you can do it, like you say, um, with small things that just are kind of different. Like, yeah, we normally wouldn't do that and don't be afraid to try that because it all will it all will filter back, hopefully, into your work, you know, into your writing. So when someone reads something, it won't be, I saw this scene in last week on television, you know, or, you know what I mean? It's sort of like different and fresh, unique because it's it's personal. It's, it's a personal experience, you know. It feels like in some ways there's less places to go these days. You know, a lot of bookstores aren't around anymore. Yes, I know. And that used to be one place where you could just get out, you know? Yes, yes. And yeah, you can go to a coffee shop and there's some great ones, but people are also busy with headphones on. Sure. And, um, They're all um, doing their own thing, you know, and not sort of like, I'm in my own little world, you're in your right. world, yeah. Yeah, but it is helpful because you just don't know... I mean, aside from, from maybe vacations or something, what are some other things you do to get yourself out of that? Well, just try to get out in the world, you know, try to, you know, I, I tend to be an introvert sometimes when I'm working, so then you gotta be like, get out of there, you know, go, go. Uh, it's not like it hasn't been done in the past, obviously, but you have to, you have to keep yourself in check that you don't, it doesn't become like, you know, 80, 20 of 80, introvert 20, you know, when it was more before, because it can slip very easily that way, where you're like, uh, mm -hmm. I don't want to go out, I want to do this thing. Um, just being around people too. Good, bad, indifferent, whatever. Sure, you know? sure, yeah. You um, see all sorts of stuff out there. Yeah. 
you know, was it Jackie Gleason who said his advice for like people in the industry was get out, like don't be a shut in. And also I think get out of the, the business, you know, because Hollywood is like this weird little place where everybody you're around is talking about the business, you know, right. and you're like, is there anybody saving lives here at this party? Do we have a doctor or something? You know, I mean, it, I mean, no, at times it really is like, oh, right. you know, and we all want to congregate together because everybody's bibbity bobbity network. But many times it's really great, you know, some big actor, I remember his, his best friends are not even in the business. They're just, you know, people not in the film business. And you're like, yeah, that's refreshing, you know. I have both, both, you know, in and out, you know. Sure. So um, it's good to have a nice mix. But if you're just around that only, it's sort of like this fake world, you know, kind of thing, so.